हेलो स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज एंथनी कशु योर सोशल साइंस टीचर टुडे वी विल लर्न द कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ लेसन फ्रॉम चैप्टर फोर दैट इज वाटर एनवायरमेंट फ्रॉम ज्योग्राफी वेल इन द प्रीवियस क्लास वी हैव ऑलरेडी लर्न व्हाई आवर प्लैनेट अर्थ इज नॉन एज अ वाटरी प्लैनेट इट इज बिकॉज water is so abundant or water is so abundant on the surface of the earth that it is called a watery planet we also have learned something about hydrological or water cycle we have learned evaporation condensation precipitation and all on the surface of the earth okay water cycle we also have discussed about major water bodies including pacific ocean atlantic ocean indian ocean arctic ocean and southern ocean so today in this lesson or in this class we will study about the movement of the sea water or the ocean water as i have already mentioned before water on the surface of the earth are not static it is always in motion it moves from one place to another it moves from one ocean to another it also moves from one region to another region so it is always in motion so the motion of the earth are broadly uh, divided into waves tides and currents so first of all let us see how the waves are caused waves are usually caused by blowing of winds when the wind blows it causes ripples ripples means a zigzag on the surface of the sea okay and it is also caused by storm storms are usually very disastrous uh, you know you might have heard about cyclone cyclones and all these are caused by storms and it is also caused by tsunami tsunami okay so uh, these are some of the causes of this wave and in fact this wave are very useful to us because this wave are a source of energy and also it produce electricity so when you look at this diagram this is how this is one of the method how electricity is obtained from the sea wave okay so it is useful in it the gentle winds or the wave that are caused by a blowing of winds are usually very useful now let us see tsunami this tsunami are a very destructive type of wave it is usually caused by undersea earthquake or the earthquake that happens beneath the seabed so to say okay so the intensity of this tsunami is very very strong it travels about 800 kilometers per hour and also it lifted up about 15 meter lifted up waters of 15 meter or more when it enters the shore all right so during the occurrence of this tsunami it is capable of destroying the entire coastal settlements the settlements or the area that lies near the coastal regions can be destroyed completely by this tsunami but uh, we can indicate we can know the signal of this tsunami very easily when there is a rapid withdrawal of sea water from the coastal region so to say when the when the water move away from the shore towards the sea it is the indication of the cause of tsunami so it takes around 3 to 4 hours people can prepare and they can be aware of themselves they can they can run away from the coastal region in order to save the occurrence of this tsunami so as an example in december 26 2014 uh, a tsunami happens especially its epicenter was uh, in sumatra that is in indonesia here in the map itself you can see that is exactly where the epicenter of the tsunami was so during this uh, tsunami around 165 people 
they lost their life, especially uh, the people, those who live near the coastal regions in this area, including India, including Burma, including Thailand, whatever it may be. So this whole region has been destroyed by this tsunami. And even in India, the southernmost point of India, that is Indira point, which is to the south of Andaman and Nicobar Island, was completely submerged because of this tsunami. So from here we can learn that tsunami is a type of wave which are very destructive, which are very disastrous and which are very danger to the human life, especially those who are living near the coastal region. Next, another type of uh, movement, the movement of the sea water or the ocean water is tight. Tight means it is a regular rise and fall of the sea water. Sometimes the sea water will rise and also it falls uh, suddenly, or uh, not suddenly, gently, so to say. And these tides are usually happen because of the gravitational pull of the sun as well as the moon. So when the moon, it comes in between the earth and the sun, usually it happens a high tide and also when it uh, when the earth is between the sun and the moon, it also usually happens a high tide, okay? So, it rise and fall, usually rise and fall twice a day, this tide. Yeah? And there are two types of tides. The first one is high tide and the second one is low tide. So, when the water level rise, from this diagram itself, you can see when the uh, water level, it rises to the a surface of this coastal region that is what we call as a high tide and it begins at the moonrise when the moon rises it started the high tide and when the when the moon continue to rise and when it reach its zenith okay so the tide will also uh, reach a maximum level the maximum levels of its uh, uh, tide all right so that is all about high tide and in the low tide water levels usually falls as the moon declines minimum when the moon sets it is in minimum when the moon sets so from this diagram itself it is very low tide because the moon set at this very point so there are high tides and low tides okay but indeed these tides are very useful especially the high tides and as well as the low tides because it is used for generating electricity okay like the wave of the oceans and also during the high tide most of the different varieties of fish will reach the seashore so it is uh, a fishing ground especially for the fishermen and those who are fishing near the coastal area it is very easy for them for fishing in this at this very time they are waiting indeed waiting for the high tide because the high tide the water will level will rise and it will come up to the seashore and it the ships for the ships also it is very useful because they can leave or enter the harbor or enter the seashore very easily understand during the high tide the ships can enter very easily and during the low tide they can also leave the seashore very easily so these are all about the tides tides usually happens because of the gravitational pull of the sun as well as uh, the moon so these are all about the tide and let's see the next one another type of movement of the sea water is ocean currents or just simply currents these are caused by three factors the first one is the temperature of the ocean water the second one is the planetary winds the third one is the rotation of the earth all right so the temperature you know the distribution of temperature on the surface of the earth are not same it is not equally distributed we receive we have low temperature in the polar areas especially in the places near the North Pole as well as, as well as the places which lies near the South Pole they have a very low temperature so on the surface of this very ocean 
the water the water will move towards pole okay towards from equator to pole so to say on the surface and at the bottom of the sea or at the bottom of the ocean the water from the from the poles from north pole as well as from the south poles it will move towards the equator so in that way it causes ocean currents it causes the movement of the oceans ocean water so to say so the second factor is planetary winds winds are always blowing on the surface of the ocean all right when it blows over the surface of the earth what happens it came in it come in contact with the surface of the ocean and it also creates currents so the direction depends on the directions of the planetary winds that are blowing on the surface of the earth and the third factor is rotation the earth rotates from west to east so when it rotates when the earth rotates from west to east uh, the water will move right side or what we call as clockwise in the northern hemisphere the north of equator so to say and it will move towards left or in the anti clockwise direction anti clockwise direction in the southern hemisphere so in that way the currents so to say the movements of the ocean water happens because of the rotation of the earth so uh, these are the three factors for the cause of these ocean currents on the other hand the ocean currents are also very useful especially to the fishermen because the warm and cold currents when they meet at a certain point it develop a fishing ground okay it produce a lot of plankton plankton means fish food so fish will always look after this plankton in order to feed themselves so in this very area the fisherman can go and catch a lot of fish okay so it is important for fishermen and even for ships if the ships follow the direction of this ocean currents they can move very much faster than the normal ships that are sailing in the ocean and they also can save a lot of fuels if they follow the ocean currents all right so these are some of the important points that you have to remember if you have any doubt don't hesitate to uh, send a text message in my whatsapp uh, whatsapp account as well as you can download all the uh, so to say important questions and answers or study materials from your whatsapp group so may god bless you all thank you very much for joining and for participating in this class